Hello, uh, my name is Mitsaka and quite a bunch of people asked me to do a tutorial about low poly because I've been um, working with Blender for uh, like four years now and I recently did quite a lot of work on that kind of style. Um, so first, uh, so some things about myself. Um, we can maybe look at the pictures I made right now in the background. Um, but I want to say that I'm uh, still a student. I live over here in Germany. And so I, I'm not a professional at all or anything. But I think I, um, yeah, got uh, some experience with low poly and want to share it with you. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is low poly essentially? Um, obviously the style is about using as um, less polygons as you can. Um, and the reason for that uh, used to be that it uh, renders way faster on um, computers, which isn't that important anymore. Like we have huge render farms for movies and um, this all this new technology that makes way more things possible. Um, so nowadays it's more like a retro kind of style that um, still looks very well. And the most important reason why you should learn uh, low poly is that it renders very fast on, uh, yeah, like normal computer. And you don't need to put a lot of effort into materials or the geometry of uh, your mesh, uh, but you can still train like lightning and composition and all those things which are really important for like more complex scenes. Um, and you, it yeah creates still quite pleasing results, which is always important when you want to do some artwork. Uh, when we talk about Lepoli, it's actually not like one kind of style, but it's a bunch of styles that are like grouped together under the name of Lepoli. And um, I now want to go over some um, of, the, of these uh, styles. And the first one is the kind of video game Lepoli style that is just there to uh, make it render faster and the important thing about that is that it has textures and it has these rounded edges that we normally wouldn't see in other kind of low poly styles. And I have an example over here. Um, this is the pyro from Team Fortress 2. And you can see at the bottom that he has quite a low poly mesh, but he doesn't really look low poly because of the textures and the rounded edges of course. Um, the, um, the next one is the isometric perspective and um, the important uh, thing is that it has a autographic perspective that means that it doesn't have like points where everything um, goes to but um, it's like a projection if you um, think about it and the camera is placed in a 45 45 45 degree um, angle to yeah show like almost everything of we scene. Um, also it um, often has a quite um, simple geometry so um, the planes and everything aren't rotated very much. It um, uses a lot of cubes and yeah similar things. Um, so yeah next style would be the 2D kind of low poly because there's not only um, the 3D kind of approach on it, but also um, programs like Photoshop and yeah, others can create those kind of 2D low poly um, pictures out of um, yeah, like real images. And yeah, this is one of the examples over here. Um, the next one is the kind of um, style that I approach, which is just a simple low poly style with very simple materials. Um, yeah, it looks kind of from a comic or something. But uh, yeah, 
really interesting and uh, again it's really um, good to like learn lightning and composition. Um, the last one I want to talk about is the low poly style that has more complex materials um, like paper kind of materials that is the most common style I guess. Um, we have some pictures over here and you can really see that um, it almost looks like paper because they have like special materials that create that kind of effect. Um, so yes, those are the styles that you could create using low poly. The next thing I uh, wanted to talk about uh, is modeling because modeling is obviously a very important part of creating a scene. But um, as this video um, was supposed to only be an overview, I won't talk too much about it. Um, but maybe in the future make some videos on very um, special kind of modeling affairs. Um, first of all, modeling um, is, yeah, well, dependent on being low poly, so we won't use like um, circles or anything, but um, yeah, well, um, objects with less polygons. I want to show you the three most important um, things that helped me uh, with modeling low poly. So um, first of all, I'm going to create, oh, um, I will get our Suzanne monkey model over here. And I want to show you the um, decimate modifier. Because what this modifier does is it essentially um, gets a high poly model and creates a low poly model from it. So you can see this monkey already has way less polygons. Um, so you can yeah, use this ratio amount to yeah, essentially create a low poly model, model from a high poly model. There's also this um, planar um, yeah, possibility that essentially merges faces together, which is um, yeah, another way of um, doing this. Well, but really useful, the decimate modifier. Uh, next thing is that I want to show you how to work with background images, because I think it's um, always very, very easy um, to model things if you have background images. So um, you can bring this tab with um, the N key uh, check background images, add an image, open one. Um, I have a blueprints folder over here. We can maybe uh, look at a Chesna. If we then go and use the numpad and press the keys over there, we can go into the different perspectives and start modeling something from a blueprint. And the uh, third thing I want to show you is how you create very interesting planes. So I'll get my plane here, scale a little bit up, go into edit mode, I press W and subdivide it. And over here on the left hand side, we can increase the number of cuts and add a bit of um, fractal to it. And that is the important key because that makes the plane yeah, look like low poly and it already creates an interesting material that we maybe could use for grass or something like a ground um, thing. Yeah. Okay. So that was the modeling part. The next point on my list is composition. And um, since this is a really big topic with a bunch of um, different uh, things. Um, I want to link you to a video um, from Andrew Price, who really described it very well, how to yeah, set up a good composition for scene. 
In Blender itself, we have some really nice tools to really get very fast into that kind of composition. Um, because if we uh, select our camera and we see, we can use these composition guides, which includes, for example, the golden ratio, which um, you might want to use, or the rule of thirds, which is very famous. Um, I think I used the um, thirds and the golden triangle A in this scene, if I'm right. Or the B one. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure anymore, but um, you can really see that, um, for example, the rule of thirds is really easy to apply when I want to move this igloo, for example, to the right spot where um, the darker area around here will um, yeah, be at this point. So this is a really nice and fast thing you can do in Blender itself. And if you want to create a kind of isometric scene um, that um, obviously needs a camera um, and for rotating uh, the camera I normally use this tab over here. So I first set everything to zero degrees, then I can um, look for the right one, the X one, yes, and then the Z one at minus 45, which then is the right um, kind of direction. Um, Important is that we normally use a uh, autographic perspective for isometric scenes. Because you can really see that yeah everything looks very um flat in that kind of um viewpoint, which is what you want to achieve. Um if you now zoom in and out with the camera you can see that nothing really happens, so you have to use the autographic scale to then get the right size for the camera. And you can use double R, no, R and double Y or double X to yeah, play a bit with the angle. And there you go. Um, that's quite a nice angle and looks very good. But this autographic button is important for some kind of styles. So next thing I want to talk about are colors. Um, because most of the low poly scenes are very dependent on the colors and very bright and vibrant um, colors. And there's a very very good video on how to yeah, get good colors by Andrew Price that I will again link down in the description. One uh, of the colors I do want to talk about today is um, the greenish kind of color. For example, let us look at the grass down here. Um, the grass has a very um, yellowish kind of green if you look at this and that is because yellowish greens look more natural. If I would set it to be like center green, where it's really green like here in the center, that simply looks fake because most um, of the greenish colors in the uh, in nature are more yeah, closer to yellow. If you would uh, paint with a brush, with a real brush, you would probably add some beige or yellowish color to your green to make it look like that. Also in Blender we have different kind of color pickers. If you didn't notice that, I am using a special color picker. You can um, find them in the user preferences tab. And yeah, under system you have these color pickers. I guess um, Circle HSV is the default one. I'm using the SV plus H square one, which is really convenient because you can um, pick the um, hue first and then play with saturation and um, yeah, brightness, which is really convenient. Okay. 
But the entity um, that really makes colors look like they do is light. So let's talk a bit about light. There's a really, really good video again from Andrew Price. Um, Andrew Price is a person um, who creates a lot of really, really good Blender tutorials. So definitely check him out. Um, lightning wise, I normally just use a sum lamp. So I will um, get our point lamp here and create a sun lamp from it. And obviously use nodes. Then I will move it a bit. Um, the position of the sun lamp is, um, by the way, not important. It's just like the direction of the sun lamp. Um, to create kind of mid day look, I will get a very low angle over here between those two lines. Um, set the strength to maybe four, get a bit of yellowish color into it and decrease the size because that creates sharper shadows. If I then render that, um, that might create some lag in your video, but there it is. Um, we can see that it is really a dayish kind of um, lightning. Um, for evening light, you normally have a higher angle, um, maybe even stronger light, like six more orange or yellowish like and then it immediately looks like it's evening and you have these very strong side kind of yeah faces um and to make that even more realistic i normally add an hdi map and there's a really good website to get those hdrilabs.com you can just download any one of these they are all free and very um, easy to use so i will um, go to my world tab use nodes use a background open an environment texture um, i got that texture from the website i just showed you um, i will use the let's use the paper mill texture. If I then render it, you can see that it has, well, the background now is like greenish kind of things, but if you fill in the whole scene, you won't see anything of it. But it adds more side lightning and everything to it, and it makes it look way more realistic overall. So definitely use an um, environment map. Yes, and we are almost done with our tutorial. Um, the last thing I want to talk about today is post-processing. So I opened a scene I made a few um, days ago. It's like Route 66 themed and we have the cars and the mountains in the background. And I want to get a bit of sense for the depth of the scene. So um, what I'm going to do is um, uh, change the render settings very quickly so that it renders very fast and render an image of it. So this might create a bit of lag again in the video. But this is our image. You can already see that there's a bit of um, white um, yeah, fog being in the background, because Blender has um, this compositing tab over here. And if you enable use nodes, you can use this node tree to, um, yeah, essentially edit the whole image after it was rendered. And if I uncheck this, I think you can see over here that it uh, does it remove the fog? Not really. Well, but what we can show maybe is if I set this to 200, you can see that it really creates a stronger fog effect. Maybe 100. Yes, that is very strong fog. 
And for some scenes that's very um, important to create like the depth of a scene. So I'm going to show you how to create fog. There are many, many other things that you can do with this um, compositor, but I guess fog is one of the um, yeah, most useful ones. So I have our image over here and our and two math nodes and a mix um, shader. You can add shaders by um, pressing Shift A on your keyboard and then go to well any tab over here. Select the right one. Math is in converter and mix is in color mix over here. Um, and then I get the image itself. If I remove this you can see that it um, mixes our original image with this um, yeah well color that I selected over here. It's a bit of uh, yeah orangish white kind of color and that essentially is the color of our fog. So if I set this to very strong orange that looks kind of weird but like bright colors always look good for fog. Um, our factor over here is made of out of two math nodes and the z data. The z data essentially tells us how far away the point that we look at is. So uh, the further it is away, the brighter or the the more important this color gets. We have an add node that isn't really important uh, right now, but sometimes it's important to make like the foreground of the image a bit darker or something. Um, well sometimes it's useful. You don't need to add this if you don't want to. The divide node is important because right now maybe this pixel over here is 50 blender units away. And if I get this um, Z data right into the factor it says that this um, has to be um, yeah like 5,000 percent important so it's like more than one so it essentially um, is immediately this color so you can use a divide node to essentially divide it and yeah get a nice fog and then there's just the composite node that is um, part of the default setup you can just draw that in and the viewer node is the node that essentially creates our backdrop over here that we can also end and disable with this button so that is um, the post-processing inside of blender in a nutshell um, now i'm gonna jump to gimp gimp is a quite a useful program. You can also uh, use Photoshop or other programs. Um, I'm sorry because this is on uh, German but um, I guess you will be able to handle that. So what I want to add here is a so-called vignette and that is essentially um, well a dark shadow around the edges. So I'm gonna get my select tool over here, the like spherical select tool. Um, select almost the whole scene. Go to selection, this is in English selection, invert selection, selection um, fade out, I guess that's what this means, and then get quite a high number like 500. And now we have a selection that well selects the surroundings and fades into the foreground. So now we can use our um, color and brightness and contrast tool to essentially reduce the brightness. You can see that it um, well immediately looks better. Maybe not this scene, but most of the scenes 
really do look better with well a very soft um, shadowy effect around the edges and that is the kind of um, post-processing you can do outside of Blender. Obviously you can also use um, the whole selection and then maybe change um, well the saturation maybe a bit up contra uh, brightness brightness up no maybe brightness even a bit down well you you get the hang of it and that really makes your scene look better at the first yeah view and that is really important okay and that was it um this video was just about yeah, getting an overview over the low poly style and I hope that you now have an idea what it is about. Um, to learn more um, I really recommend you watching the videos down in the description and I will probably post some um, other videos about more specific kind of low poly affairs um, on this channel and yeah hopefully um you have learned a lot and yeah we will see us next time bye bye